Good evening everyone, this is Mike Breeze introducing you to our annual newsreel. Tonight we have another action-packed show. But before we start, we have a couple of important well-wishers who unfortunately can't be with us tonight. Um, unfortunately I can't be there tonight, uh, I'm really sorry about that but another engagement, uh, I'd love to have been there, I know I've been captured a few times in my mayoral year uh, with the good selves. But unfortunately, I can't be there, so I hope everybody have a good evening and enjoy the night and uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm really sorry that I'm not be able to be with you in person to take part in the, this prestigious event, the Burnley Filmmakers Association. Uh, I'm in Parliament, sadly, but I wish you a wonderful evening and I look forward to viewing some of the productions at a later date. Have a lovely evening. At the beginning of the year, we had the opening of the new Prairie Sports Village. This new sport venue includes a 16-bay golf practice range with power tees. In April, we witnessed a long overdue medal presentation. Shall we go and have a bite? I think so. <laughs> Once again, the Clarets made it back to the Premier League. Your chaps seem very popular today. What's the occasion? Do it. It was a beautiful day for the first Padium on Parade event, commemorating Armed Forces Day. An adorable little girl here, and I know for a fact her mummy made this out of Vive la France! Good morning, Mr. Churchill. How do you do? How do you? How do you? How do you do? Very nice to meet you, sir. Please Thank sit down. You. Uh, <coughs> how do you think the war effort's going? Fine, fine. We will never surrender. We will fight them on the beaches. <laughs> But we start tonight in November last year with Radio Lancashire's Graham Liver canoeing for children in need. On the 7th of November, Radio Lancashire's Graham Liver started his mammoth children in need journey. He set off in a Canadian canoe on the Lancaster Canal to paddle to Preston. If this wasn't enough, he then transferred to the Leeds Liverpool Canal to travel a massive 120 miles from Talton to Bourne Oldwick. You're doing very well, Graham. Thank you. Hey, fantastic. Thank you. He's going to be sleeping and canoodling with someone. We caught up with him on the 13th of November at Briarfield on the last leg of his journey from Burnley to Bourne Oldwick. Although cold, wet and tired, he still managed to greet the hardy souls that had turned out to cheer him on. Not long. I'm in next off. You video in? Yep. Oh my god. Where are you from? Well, the filmmakers. CSS. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm a bit tired, but I'm all right. I'm all right. Well, well, you're on the last leg now. Yeah. You're back in the truck. Yeah. yeah. Are you going all right? Going all the way through the full risk tunnel. Going all the way through the full risk tunnel. At the end of this epic journey, he had raised over £24,000 for children in need. Well done, Graham. Really, the culmination of the process that started uh, back in 2011. This is Paul Foster, 
Head of Development for Burnley Leisure. And he's talking about what used to be the Prairie Playing Fields, situated on Windermere Avenue. Although the facility was a great venue for games of all types, it was in great need of a facelift. And after an injection of £350,000 from lottery-funded Sport England and a lot of hard work, the 12th of February this year saw the opening of this wonderful sports village. This new sport venue includes a 16-bay golf practice range with power tees. There is also an opportunity to learn and to be coached using state-of-the-art GC2A launch, monitor and simulator, where you can whack the ball as hard as you like without injuring anyone unless you pull a muscle. Prairie Golf Pro James Major explains. Uh, my job is to give golf lessons uh, to the customers who are paying customers from the prairie. Uh, this is our swing studio. Uh, we have uh, effectively three usages from this studio. We give the golf lessons for tuition purposes. Uh, we use a very, very high speed uh, camera system called GC2, which allows us, allows us to glean a lot of data from what a golf ball is doing. We can use that to, to custom fit golf equipment for, for people who want to. Pop it in the bunker. There is an FA accredited 3G football pitch facilitating a number of different size areas, apart from the full size pitch. Downstairs there are modern changing facilities. The icing on the cake is a superb licensed bistro with a mouth-watering menu. There is also Sky TV and Wi-Fi. And with the availability of conference and meeting rooms, Prairie Sports Village is a brilliant all-round venue for both sport and leisure. Good morning everybody. Welcome to the Prairie Sports Village. I'm Neil Hutchinson, Head of Operations for Burnley Leisure Trust. Uh, I've been lucky to be involved in this uh, project. Neil Hutchinson, Head of Operations and Project Manager for Burnley Leisure, opens the proceedings. Certainly before I was uh, working for Burnley Leisure. Um, but back in 2011... After an introductory speech, it was Paul Foster's turn to explain the success of the project. And in turn, introducing Scott Bryce, operations manager, explaining that the pitch had actually been open since September 2015, where they had had a massive response to its usage with many weekly based bookings. And we've had over 550,000 balls have actually been hit on our range. I'd like to give everybody, first of all, a very warm welcome. Uh, to the prairies. Councillor B. Foster was then invited to express her enthusiasm for this wonderful new facility. Funders and guests here today. Anyway, I just want to say this, that none of this comes about unless there's a lot of work going behind the scenes. It was then time for the official opening. President of the Football Foundation, Lord Pendry, after a short speech, unveiled a ceremonial plaque which declared the sports village officially open. Say one, two, three. You. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three. In March, the Burnley Leisure Organisation set out to achieve a new world record for the number of players taking part in the game of rounders. On a bright spring day, people of all ages gathered in Townley Park for the rounders attempt and also a charity run. To start with, the organisers got everyone involved in a mass warm-up before doing anything else. Let's go. 
Then it was all go for a range of various distances from one to six miles to suit the ages and running abilities of the contestants. Some 200 people took part in raising money for sport relief. Jack, can you tell me, uh, you're from a club of course, so, and what, which club is that? Clearly Wars Harriers. And yep. you, came, you came first in the one milers, yes. which is a great achievement. Um, Thank you. <laughs> presume, how long have you been training for this? Uh, well, I've been running since I was 13. I've, I've actually training for the um, veterans under meters at Birmingham in the summer. I'm just doing this as a training run, a fast training run, and I've been doing the uh, Burnley Park on 5Ks, and I officiate there every week. With the run out of the way, it was time for the rounders. 118 people then signed in to take part in the rounders game, and these were divided into white and red teams. There was a bit of waiting around whilst all the preparations could be complete, but then the Whites took to the field and the Reds went into bat. A great deal of fun was had by all and the aim of breaking the world record was achieved. And now Burnley are world champions. Easter Monday, and once more the stone alleyways of Queen Street Mill echo to the sound of clogs. Not the clogs of weavers, but clog dancers from Rosendale and Littleborough. In the engine room, the engine piece was pumping out 500 horsepower to supply power to the main factory. In its heyday, it powered nearly a thousand looms. Today, there are just over 300 of the original 19th century Lancashire looms left. Since November 2015, the future of the world's only steam-powered weaving mill has been under threat when the County Council announced plans to cease funding the museum. How sad if we were to lose this last piece of the area's cotton heritage. You would almost think we were at the East Lancashire Railway or on the Howarth train. But no, April the 16th got the wheels turning with the start of the 2016 muddling year. Model railway enthusiasts of all ages shunted into St Luke's Church Hall, Briarfield, to view in amazement at the layouts and rolling stock on display.
This superb layout here portrays the area that has now, thanks to Mr Beechin, been replaced by guess what? Yes, the A56, the Haslingdon Bypass. And if you look closely at the top right hand corner of this model, we see Britannia Mill, which of course still remains to this day, only it's at the side of the Haslingdon Bypass. Yes, this very ground was part of our great railway network. And apparently, this is what Earby used to look like. The weekend was a great success and the organisers of Briarfield Model Railway Club can be proud of their efforts. It was a great fundraiser for St Luke's Church and the Church Hall. I'm very proud to be here today as Bernie's MP uh, to, to honour Harvey O'Hara. But for those of you who don't know, for the benefit of, of Madam Mayor, who met him also for the first time today, I, I would just like to say that... You know, Harvey is Burnley born and bred, and we're really proud of him. Uh, he's not led an ordinary life though, he's led an exceptional life. Uh, you know, he was a commando, a train commando. Uh, and I, yes, Harvey O'Hara was part of the Normandy invasion in June 1944. And on the 24th of April this year, 92-year-old Harvey received France's highest decoration, the Legion d'Honneur, at a special service in Townley Park for his efforts in the Second World War. Instituted in MP Julie Cooper and our Mayor, Councillor Liz Monk, were there to do the honours. Apart from his heroics during the war, Harvey has also been busy in other areas. I asked him about his family. I'm 41 now. <laughs> One ball last weekend. Yes. 41? Great grandchildren. Good Lord, all right, yeah. Two great great grandsons. My word. One great great grandson on the way in Australia in July. Well done, sir. 20 Congratulations. Yeah. 20. Our five daughters. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a busy chap. The army, it seems, is certainly bred into the family. This is one of Harvey's 41 grandchildren, W01 Barker. Absolutely brilliant. I think it's been a long time coming for these um, brave soldiers to get this award. Um, it's been over sort of 40 years that he's eventually got it. So I think it's absolutely fantastic that all of the veterans have now been recognised and uh, rightly acclaimed. And uh, what position do you hold, Madam? In, in um, I'm a W01 in Her Majesty's Armed Forces. I'm currently the um, Queen's Master Driver down in London. So I work down in London District and I run all of the transport, pretty much. Very good. So he tells it like it's was an everyday occurrence, like going to the supermarket. When he talks about the fate of his colleagues and the, the battles that he fought and the exceptional hardships that he endured, we're here today with Madam Mayor to present the highest honour that France could bestow on anyone for their military effort. Uh, Harvey was been singled out to receive the Légion d'honneur, so an award instituted by Napoleon himself and only awarded for outstanding service, military service to France. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to hand over to Madame Mayor to, to perform the honours to prevent this. Harvey, Thank you, dear. I'd like to present this Legion d'Honneur medal to you for all your services during the war. 
You're a credit to Burnley, a credit to your family. It's an honour for me to present this medal, and today is your day and your day alone. I have one thing to say to my family, be true to yourself, you can't go far wrong. Shall we go and have a pint? I think so. <laughs> Regular column writer Edward Lee tested his health and fitness levels when, on the 30th of April, he put on his running shoes and took to the running track. Seed Hill Athletic Track was the venue for another well worth charity event. This also coincides with the 200th anniversary of the Leeds Liverpool Canal. We spoke to Edward about the event that he'd organised. Yeah, uh, today we're trying to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal by running or walking the length of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal twice. Thought we'd do it the length once for each hundred years. So that's 254 and a half miles. Uh, about 408 kilometres we worked it out at, which works out at 1,025 laps of the Seed Hill running track, which Pendle Leisure Trust have kindly given us for the day. So I put an appeal out for people to come along and either run or walk, uh, and we're about 20 past 10 in the morning now, we've been going since 8, and we've got nearly 400 laps out of the 1,025 we need already, and I know there's a lot of laps out there. There's one guy out there running at the moment who's coming up to 60 laps himself. Uh, well, Edward's a, a friend and someone I know through work and he, he brought on this event to raise money for Petal and for Pendleside Hospice and I thought, what better way to spend this Saturday morning than running 60 laps to see Hill running track. I've so. just done 60, 15 miles, so I think I'll call that, uh, call it, that it for the day and then uh, go home and uh, <laughs> relax for the afternoon now. The reason we were doing it, as well as celebrating the canal anniversary, is I'm doing a year-long challenge for both Pendleside Hospice and Petal Childhood Cancer Research and I set myself a personal target of running or walking 2,600 kilometres in the year uh, and within that challenge I wanted lots of other challenges to test myself I decided one of the challenges would be to organise a mass participation event and that's why today came about so uh, we've had about 45 to 50 people pre-registered and quite a lot of people have turned up on the day and just had a go so we've got till 8 o'clock tonight to do the other 600 and a bit laps uh, as I say a tenth of those are out there at the moment because I know Chris has got about 60 laps in him already so hopefully the weather will remain quite kind to us uh, some more people turn up there's a lot of people who've pre-registered haven't come yet they'll be the afternoon session and we're having a good time the beneficiaries of this event are Petal, the Childhood Cancer Research Charity, and our very own Pendleside Hospital. So basically, we raise money that goes towards funding research into children's cancer, and obviously Pendleside Hospital covers a massive, yeah. broad thing, but we're both local, so... And how many laps are you hoping to complete? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it until lunchtime. <laughs> well, uh, well, we'll do our little bit. Um, I've come to help Ed um, in his uh, challenge to walk 2,600 kilometres. He's in. Um, he's raising money for the side Hospice. So, so I'm going to do a bit. Um, Ed is raising money um, for Petal and for the hospice, Pendleside Hospice, uh, both great charities. Um, the money's going to be split between the two charities. So today is about um, supporting Ed and getting some practice in myself because I'm doing the Great North Run in September. This gentleman is 83 years old. We are now coming up to the end of April and looking forward to spring. 
The climate hasn't been great, but now with spring in the air, we must be due for some reasonable weather. Just a minute. Am I seeing things? No, on the 29th of April, we woke up to this, and I must say, it was a bit of a shock. Yes, we had a good three to four inches of snow to contend with, and the roads were quite treacherous for a while. It's a pity we didn't get the trophy at Charlton. But well, just over a week later, not only the weather, but Burnley Football Club's future got brighter. On May the 9th, the TV cameras were at the Town Hall. They played host to a very proud and happy football team, as our Mayor at the time endorses. It's such a good day for all the town and all the football club and everyone that's associated with the football club. Burnley Football Club and again made it back to the Premier League. And today the streets were packed with 20,000 delighted fans. Chaps seem very popular today. What's the occasion? One by one, the lads were introduced to the fans. Later on, I asked Sean Dyke his thoughts on staying in the Premier League this time. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's another tough challenge. And, you know, last time we were written off immediately, we'll probably get that again. Um, so we'll see. But we'll, we've got some planning in place. So we look forward to taking that into the Premier League and see how it fares. Perhaps I had a premonition, as I then asked Joey Barton if he planned to stay at Burnley. You have to ask the manager. Um, he's the one in charge of that, so... I'll have a word with him. Yeah, have a word with him. We'll see <laughs> what happens. You, Cheers, thank you. It seems my word with Mr Dyke fell on deaf ears. But we must thank Joey for the vital contribution his skills made to our football team. Well done, Joey Barton. Burns has got everything going for it. Look around. We're better than any town. It's those people from Blackburn, I believe. That uh, you think so? You think it might be? Oh, me, maybe. I'm well, yes, yes. Well, well you, you were mayor, sir, weren't you? At the last time. Four years ago. Me. Were they in the Premier? Did they go? You were. At that yeah. time, yes, I remember it. Yes. And when I left, we'd been in the mayor. They fell down again. <laughs> it was then time for the open top ride to Turf Moor, enabling fans to pay their tribute to their Premier team. <laughs> Later on, in the month of May, the residents of Paddyham turned out for their annual wit war. I spoke to Paddyham's relatively new mayor, Councillor James Kirk, for his thoughts on the day. It's, a, it's an important part of the, of the calendar of Paddyham. Um, I think it's something that we need to be doing and to show support for communities uh, such as this that have a, a, um, a declining church population. Uh, I think it's good to support those. Uh, and a lot of people really enjoy things like this. It's a good family day out as well. And we've got the weather, which is helping. Hopefully we'll have a decent turnout. Preparations took place behind St Leonard's Church, where various groups were busy preparing themselves.
Okay. Also ready for the walks are last year's Mayor and Mayoress of Padium, Councillor Howard Hudson and his lovely wife. <laughs> Where else would we be? Absolutely. And rightly so. He's up there. Yes, he is. <laughs> we spotted him. See you later. Thank you. My next encounter was Burnley's Deputy Mayor, Councillor Howard Baker. Absolutely. No, looking forward to it. Yeah. And, and do you sort of st- start your term in, in... You will do, won't you? I've started deputy? my term last Wednesday. So this is my fourth day. So on fourth day I'm on a wit walk. So, so how, how do you feel about What does it mean to you to be Deputy Mayor? So I beg your pardon. What does it mean to you to be... It means very proud to represent the town. And next year, hopefully, if I live long enough, I should be Mayor as well. So <laughs> it moves up a grade at that. Well, we look forward to that, sir. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Now... Apparently, when there is a procession of this sort, the authorities do what is called a rolling roadblock. This helps to keep the traffic flowing without too many problems. route takes us down Burnley Road and past the Town Hall there on the right. It then goes over the River Calder, up as far as Victoria Road, where it then turns and comes back through the town. Notice here our reporter Jeff Wilson home in action. The procession finally reaches St Leonard's Church, where a wonderful outside service took place, conducted by the Reverend Mark Jones. Perfectly wonderful day, and I'm sure enjoyed by everyone. Well done, Paddy. Yeah. Yeah. The first official event for our new mayor and mayoress, councillors Jeff and Leslie Sumner, this year was the Mayor at Home, where tea and cakes were enjoyed by visiting mayors, dignitaries, and of course the public. Our ex-mayor, Councillor Monk, getting in first with a tombola ticket. As usual, there is a magnificent flower display on the landing of the town hall, greeting the guests as they make their way towards the dining room. Tombola, always a popular temptation for the ladies and some of the men. Mayor's attendant, David Farrer, introduces the guests as they arrive. Our Mayor and Mayoress take their seats. Then, of course, there's the usual photo call. The absence of Mr Mayor tells me he must be getting ready for his speech and the raffle. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. The mayor would like to say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 First of all, uh, thank you all for coming. You will notice there that Dave is just checking to see if his tickets are in the booking. Thank you for coming to Burnham. I hope you've enjoyed this last couple of hours. Uh, it's been great seeing you here today. I know some of you have been previously. Um, 
You're always welcome here in Burma, so please call whenever. Um, Meanwhile, David gets his raffle tickets at the ready. It didn't help, though, he didn't win. I'm going to ask the mayoress to. Everyone loves a raffle, and it raised £244. I asked our mayor what being mayor meant to him. Uh, I'm representing Burnley, where uh, a great town, I'm born and bred in the town. Uh, I'd never leave the town. When I go away on holiday, I want to come back. You know, uh, it does mean a lot to uh, represent the borough uh, and be the first citizen. You know, I'm really proud, my family's proud. Uh, and it's, it's something I wanted to do since I become a councillor. I then asked him about his charities. Uh, I had about five or six charities, but uh, the mayor's committee said you need to bring it down a little bit. Uh, the three charities have gone for the, the hospice, uh, Penicide Hospice, uh, the British Heart Foundation, and also um, the um, Samaritans. May 27th, and Townley Hall was the venue for the launch of a new book, Journeys of Faith. Canon Peter Hopgood Strickland explains the origins of the project. We had with us in charge was someone called uh, Nazarul Ranwar, and he looked at various pro ideas and came up with the Heritage Lottery project of looking at the, some of the faith buildings in Burnley and telling their story. And so this is what has happened. We've, been working for well over three years now looking at eight faith buildings, looking at the story and the story of the people who went there and how really these buildings uh, in many ways show us the history of Burnley. Co-authors of the book were Abdul Ghaffar and Nikki Davis. Yeah, we've written the book itself. We've taken uh, volunteers' interviews that they've given with uh, people from the communities that we've gone out and talked to. They've had their own experiences. It's research that they've taken from the archives, from the libraries, and we've put that into one big book. So it's accessible for everybody, really, in one place. Representatives and guests from the eight places of worship attended the launch of the book and were presented with a commemorative copy of the book for their church archives. May the 29th this year saw what seemed to be the start of our summer proper. The organisers of Thompson Park Fun Day chose a lovely day for this great colourful family day out. The Accrington Pipe Band set the scene. Julie Cooper taking time out from what must be a very busy schedule in Parliament to enjoy this lovely family day out.
the weekend of the 25th of June, Padium made an unprecedented effort to display and remind us of the reasons we can now walk our streets in freedom. This magical weekend kicked off at Padium Football Ground's Churchill Room and music from five decades with the Bardsby Babes. I asked Abby Barsby, a football club committee member, about the night. Right, as people are probably aware, it's the Armed Forces Weekend in Padium. We're holding it in Padium this year because Burnley Town Centre is being pulled up and reno renovated. Um, so Padium Football Club was asked if we would be part of Padium on Parade. So as I'm on Padium Football Club committee, I decided to do an event on the Friday night because it was asked if the local pubs and clubs could do that. On Saturday, Padium was somewhere in France. The first ever Padium on Parade was now well underway. Padium can be proud of their efforts in commemorating the end of Armed Forces Week. Residents threw themselves wholeheartedly into taking the town back to the 40s. And of course, the Yanks were in town. Even Café René was open for business. Tout le français, la France a perdu un bâtiment, mais elle n'est pas perdu la guerre. Soldat français, notre patrie est en peril de mort. Luttons de pour la Seigneur. Vive la France! Today and tomorrow is a commemoration of Armed Forces Week. Normally, for the last three years, it's been held in Burnley, but Burnley's been rejuvenated in the town centre, so we had to move. So we thought, well, if we're going to move, let's make it bigger and better, and so we're taking on a 40s theme, and that's what we've done this weekend. First, in Padium, it's called Padium on Parade, and we want to make sure we do it year after year after year. I see Godfrey and Sister Dolly are there. Uptown Padium was also getting into the spirit, with Molly Rigsby's bar fraternising with the Yanks. <laughs> Rounding up the official part of Saturday, the mayors and their mayoresses of Padium and Burnley were guests of honour at the 40s costume parade in the Montgomery suite at Molly Rigsby's. <laughs> At 4pm and St Leonard's Church put on a romantic play that follows the story of a young couple and their journey through the war years. But first, look who I found sitting at the back. Good morning Mr Churchill. How do you do? How do you, how do you, how do you do? Very nice to meet you sir. Please thank sit down. You, uh, <coughs> how do you think the war effort's going? Fine, fine. We will never surrender. We will fight them on the beaches. <laughs> Excellent sir. Sunday was a much more serious day, where we start at the Cenotaph in the Memorial Park and the laying of wreaths led by Lord Shuttleworth. For the fall. They shall draw not all, but we are to your hold. Age shall not wield again, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you. We will now start with the replaying. Lord Shuttleworth, if you will, please, sir.
the bottom of the high street, Lord Shuttleworth and party fell out to make their way down to the town hall. Is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Once again, Burnley's As The Foundation 10K run was another beautiful sunny day this year. Yes, on the 5th of June we saw almost 2,000 runners set off from Townley Park, a completely new starting point from previous years. full of spectacular colours as the competitors made their way around and out of the park. Matthew Lalo's time was 34.14 minutes. Well done, Danny. Danny Collins came second in a time of 35.15, with Dan Balshaw coming in third at 35.46. So well done for Matthew and Danny, our first two over the line today. And we've got our third runner coming back now. In May 2015, Gawthorpe Hall closed its doors to the public. This was to allow essential repair work to be carried out to the 400-year-old building. The house disappeared under a wrapping of scaffolding and plastic. Museum manager Rachel Pollitt explains the problems experienced during the restoration. For the last 12 months the hall has been closed to the public, we've had a, a major building restoration project taking place at the hall. Um, it was mainly to do with the windows, work to do with all the leaded windows and the stonework on there, and also the pointing and work on the out exterior stonework, and then inside the building some work on the plaster, and they've got some very old plaster ceilings in here, so to do with those. The work itself is quite simple, but because the hall's 400 years old, there was a major job to do with packing up the building, protecting all of the items that are in it, all of the furniture and the paintings and the ceramics, and then also with protecting things like the wooden floors and the plaster ceilings and the staircase. Um, so a massive job of sort of wrapping the hall up in a big parcel and keeping it all protected. And then the because we've got over 200 windows, doing work on all of the le they're all leaded windows, so they're all quite small diamond-shaped panes, um, it's very specialist work to replace the glass and to, to do that delicate work on there and um, that also takes a huge amount of time for the windows to be taken out and then protective 
coverings put in so there's no water in the building um, and then to get to the top of the building we're a tower shaped building there was a huge set of scaffolding wrapped around the outside um, to sort of allow access up to the roof and the top of the building so big project so the hall is now fully open to the public as now it is yes finally we are fully open it's been a long process the building work finished in february we then had to unwrap the hall if you like and everything in it so first a major job of cleaning because although the work was done very well you have still got dust everywhere as you'll know if you do anything in your own home um so we've had to clean all of that up and then slowly start to get the rooms back together again so clean all the floors and repolish them and then you need lots of people involved to try and move the large furniture in place and then get it all clean then unwrap the ceramics, get the curtains back up. Everything has taken you know, a good couple of months to do all of that. And we're still doing bits and pieces um, to get sort of small details finished off. But yes, we opened on the 20th of April. Um, so it's really nice to have the public back in again and, and have the house looking how it should, really. And finally, after almost 12 months, the splendour of Gawthorpe Hall is available for all to enjoy. In 2009, young farmer Andrew Nutter from Sabden Old Hall Farm tragically passed away, having suffered with cancer for over 12 months. Mum Ruth talks to us about Andrew. He left school and he'd worked on farm all his life and that's all he ever wanted to do. Never married, he was single. He, with his brother Brian, he did contracting for they did contracting for about three years and then they decided that uh, they could, we could expand farm here and he came at home and he worked, he worked at home, just did odd jobs for other people but he worked at home then till, you know, he died then. Since then a charity tractor run in his memory has been held. And so these wonderful people once again gave up their day to subscribe to this great cause. Well, it's, very, it's just quite stressful, isn't it? And I don't do all like this. I just don't. We've done all bits before. But it's this. They're all getting stuck and they're all getting this. Yeah. <laughs> they think it's wonderful, they do. Andrew's best friend, Phil Sanderson, was a great help to him during his treatment and through him and Andrew's sister, Laura, the tractor run was started. We spoke to Laura about the idea. Phil's been a family friend for many, many years and uh, Phil sort of supported Andrew through his treatment. He went with him to the chemo unit, sat there with him, he took him through his radiotherapy. So he's seen how much effort these charities put into treat well trying to treat patients, basically, yes. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, I've known him. I've been like, lived up here for about 24 years, and I got to know him. And, and when my kids were born, he was like another father to them. Uh, they used to come on here all the time. And obviously, when he was taken ill, we, uh, you know, I helped him and took him for chemo, and it just went on like that. Then they were off. The weather was holding nicely and fingers were crossed for a good day. Iam was the first village to pass through and the Four Alls pub was ready and waiting to start filling the buckets with cash. Then it's down the bypass to fence with Andrew's brother Brian proudly leading the convoy. The White Swan on Wheatley Lane caused a bit of a hold up as it became an emergency powder room break. Of course, the calls of nature cannot be ignored. The Sparrow Hawk was next to replenish the stocks as this brilliant procession made its way down to Barrow Ford. Thank you very much. Very generous of you. Thank you. Where they were waiting impatiently to see this great sight. Bread. <laughs> Been out here 
here for weeks. I think the worst of the weather arrived when they reached the Bay Horse in Roughly, where the heavens opened. Yes, certainly look ready to be entertained as they pass through roughly on their way to Bali. What an incredible day. Thanks must go to everyone for their enthusiasm and stamina. A big thanks also go to the public for their generosity and also this year's main sponsors, NBC Northwest Limited, and the digital sponsors, Craig's Energy Limited. Around £6,000 was raised, which will be shared between the Royal Blackburn Hospital Chemotherapy Unit and Rosemere Cancer Foundation. There's a lady under a gazebo and she'll tell you all about it. And you can make all sorts of fascinating things. Anyway, I'll see you later. And go look at that on TV. That was the famous explorer, Septimus Popperwell, checking out the boggarts along the canal towpath. On the 27th of August this year, Burnley pulled out all the stops to produce the best Burnley Canal Festival. Christina Cope from Pendleside Hospice was very excited about the weekend ahead. Uh, it's a fantastic event, it's very quirky this year, there's lots going on. And uh, yes, our walkers from Pendleside Hospice are doing a sponsored walk hey. from the hospice to um, this canal festival and they can return if they want. And so we're really grateful that the weather's so wonderful today. <laughs> Today is the first day of Burnley Canal Festival and um, we're here at Sandygate Square and there's activity all day from 11 till 5. At around 11 o'clock our mayor cut the ribbon and a few moments later announced the festival officially opened. I would like to welcome everyone here to Burnley's biggest and brightest canal festival. He went on to thank the organisers for the hard work they'd put in for this wonderful weekend. So this is our interactive periscope and what we've been doing is we've been going to town to town to document all the interesting things that we find. So I'm Lady Shunarella of the Towpath Explorers Club and we're getting people set to go and explore the towpath and help us to find the boggarts. Oh my goodness, I hope you've reported it. The festival itself spread from Sandergate along the towpath, taking in the Inn on the Wharf along to Westgate. And on the Sunday, families were out again for another full day of activities. You are now completely cured of the beer and wasp that you didn't have in the first place, but I just gave it you and I just gave it away from you. Dignitaries from Burnley and our twin town 
Vitry Sassane uh, near Paris in France once again came together. For this was for the presentation of Le Drapeau de Honneur to our Mayor, Councillor Jeff Sumner. Burnley's Central Library was the venue for this wonderful and prestigious occasion. The October weather this year was also on its best behaviour, and the 15th was no exception. To welcome you all here to Burnley Library for an event. Baroness Massey of Darwin had flown in from Strasbourg to present this flag of honour to our Mayor from the Council of Europe. Good afternoon, everybody. I see that Burnley was uh, mentioned in the Times this week as being the friendliest town in England. Is that true? Yes. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Baroness Massey spoke of her delight in the success of the twinning of Vitry and Burnley and how it has flourished over the years and also her passion for young people to learn different languages. Celebrate the award. We really cannot go on just speaking English. I think we've just got to learn other languages. And French is a beautiful language, beautiful literature. So you over there, you've got to learn French. <laughs> All right? Promise me? Okay, I'll be back. I'm watching you. Um, so it was then time for the presentation. And congratulations again. Bravo. Burnley is one of only eight places across Europe to be awarded the European Flag of Honour in 2016. got an interpreter here. We haven't got many words to interpret, but uh, it's a, it means a lot. So, With the help of an interpreter, our Mayor gave an acceptance speech. Madam Mayoress, distinguished guests... The Deputy Mayor of Vitry then, along with the help of an interpreter, also expressed her delight at being here for this wonderful occasion. Then, with a lovely rendering of some French songs sung by Whittlefield Primary School, a very successful day came to an end. I think today's been absolutely fabulous. I think in particular, seeing the children having a go at another language and listening to all this and how important it is to be part of Europe. And it's been great that this town has been so long running these events and being part of a whole European system. What, what, what a wonderful event this is, celebrating the twinning between Burnley and the Vitry so saying. Uh, I mean, it's a real heartwarming experience. And, and in the week when Burnley's been voted the friendliest town in Britain, I think we've demonstrated today that we are a, a forward, outward-looking people. Congratulating our MP on achieving the dizzy heights of Shadow Secretary, I took the opportunity to ask her about our own Burnley General Hospital, and its new status. Yes, so teaching hospital, which is fantastic. We're going to be teaching doctors here, and it, it's good in so many fronts because, first of all, it ups the status of the hospital. But some of the experience in other towns where this happens is that some of the doctors, actually, when the trains stay around and they take employment here, and we're desperately sort of doctors. And the other thing is that are very attractive for consultants. Teaching consultants like to work in teaching hospitals, and again, we're desperately short. So it's a really good news story for Burnley and I'm really proud to be associated with it. This archive footage was filmed at Queen Street Mill on its final day of production before closing down on the 12th of March 1982. Lancashire County Council Museum Services reopened it again in 1997 along with Hamshaw Mill. But now they're Strublet Mill. Because of government cutbacks, Lancashire County Council can no longer afford to run this 19th century steam powered weaving mill and on Friday the 30th of September this year it was open to the public for the last time. I've been with, with the County Museum Service since November 1973 when it all started um, and obviously therefore I've been heavily involved with both Queen Street Mill and Helmshaw Textile Museums all the years that the County Museum Service has been involved. This is a very sad day um, but we are hopeful, or I'm certainly hopeful, that in the next 
few weeks, it, or maybe it might take a month or two, uh, something new will come out uh, for a different organisation to run on both this site and the Helmshaw Textile Museum site. I hadn't heard of it before, so it's actually from, through social media that I found out it was closing that made me think I wanted to come down and have a look. So how far have you travelled today? Not, well, I've not travelled very far, but my aunt has. <laughs> how far have you come from today? Uh, to from different? South London. And we're pride alas, flown out at windows. But it seems to be we've lost our way, for they're closing Queen Street Mill today. Just out of it, fair jowls me head. No clatter of clogs in weaving shed. No me mooring now across the alley. Just barely snock in an empty valley. Through streets of smart suburbia, the knocker up as goes, goes creeping. While a host of new alarm clocks to work. You must be going. Thank you. Go and see the engine room and boiler house, it's spectacular. Shut down as we see what you know what it's all about basically. The future is very uncertain unless a buyer is found. I do think it's a very sad and also a very disappointing thing that this place is closing um, because I feel future generations are going to miss out on something as unique as this as it is the only operating Victorian style mill left in the world and I do hope that uh, there is somewhere that this place is left open because I think it is a great loss. I think it's very sad that it's closing and I just hope that somebody takes it over and keeps it running because it deserves it. October 2016 saw the 200th anniversary of the opening of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. To celebrate this event, a flotilla of boats made the 127 mile journey from Leeds to Liverpool. At the wharf in Burnley, the Mayor, Councillor Jeff Sumner, eagerly awaited the arrival of the boats, headed by the historic Kennet. As volunteer Linton Childs, how the journey had been so far. Uh, we've had um, we had a power cut on one of the electric swing bridges over in Riddlesden, and that knocked us back two hours. So instead of landing at six, we landed at eight o'clock at night with ten boats. Did in the nobody have any shillings with them? To no, <laughs> no, no. It's just a case of a fella coming for an hour and a half to press a button. Councillor Sumner explained how important the canal was to the development of Burnley. History in the making, to be honest, you know. 200 years ago when this created here, it's actually created Burnley, to be honest with you, because without the canal we would have been just a little village, like we were all the years ago, 200 years ago. But it, it's given us our industry, it's given us our, um, our livelihood, really, you know. And it's gone from a little village to a big town now, so and that's down to the Leeds and the Liverpool Canal. And uh, they've come from Leeds, they're half, they're half, what, did you say halfway now? We're just over halfway. Just we over. were halfway as we came into Skipton. Yeah. All right. So yeah. 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 And uh, you're off to Blackburn uh, tomorrow? Blackburn tomorrow, celebrations at Blackburn tomorrow. Yeah. And then we're stopping at, at Chorley, <laughs> uh, Wigan. That's right. Uh, Mersey Motorboat Club. 
and then into Eldonia village for their big celebration and we're actually going through the 1812 bridge And so, just as 200 years ago, the Kennet made its way out of our area on its way to Liverpool. We too must leave you. We hope you have enjoyed our show and you will join us again next year. And now, please enjoy your supper. Good night. Good night.